Hi everyone. I thought I'd take a little bit of time and show off some of the different types of micrometers that are out there. Now, of course, everyone's going to be pretty familiar with the regular outside micrometer with the flat anvil faces. Uh, these are so common that people don't even think about them anymore. But let me show you some of the more uncommon ones. So out here we have a depth micrometer, an inside micrometer, a tubing micrometer or a wall thickness micrometer a thread micrometer, and this one's something called a comparator micrometer. We'll talk about that one later because it's got some other interesting tidbits about it. Out of all the ones out here, the one you're most likely to come across is probably the depth micrometer. This is used for measuring the depths of holes or slots or what have you. Anything that this rod can fit down into that you need to measure from the top of a surface down to the bottom. And uh, the way that works is you would you would put it down on the top of your part and then feed your micrometer down until you hit the bottom. Now these do have a ratcheting mechanism and uh, I tend not to use it because it tends to sort of jack the, the micrometer up off of the part. So instead I grab the smooth part of the thimble and just let it slip in my hands when I'm using that. These are a little bit strange to read at first because your measurement is actually hidden by the thimble of the micrometer. So you have to read what is there and then extrapolate what's not. But right now we can see the 850 line, but we know that the edge of our thimble is not right up next to it. So we know that we're past uh, 825. Then we have another 8 thousandths. So 825 plus 8 is 833. And we're in between the 8 and 9. This one doesn't have a vernier scale. I'm sure there are some that do. So in this case, you would just have to split the difference and say, okay, that's about four tenths. Now you can see over here, I've got a, a box that has all these different rods in it. And you can replace the rods for a different measuring range just by taking off that cap and sliding the rod out. I'm gonna take the lock off first. And then you just replace it with the one that you want. So in this case, that was the uh, one to two inch rod. So this is my zero to one inch rod right here. And this one will actually go all the way up to 12 inches deep. So it's a pretty comprehensive set. You would calibrate these uh, using gauge blocks preferably. So if you've got a one to two inch range, you would put a one inch gauge block up there and make sure that it reads zero. You could also use one, two, three blocks to do this. Uh, just use the one inch side, the two inch side, the three inch, and then you can start stacking them up to get four, five, and six, and then adding blocks. Uh, but if you're going to do that, you need to make sure that you know the actual size of the blocks, not just the fact that uh, they're called one, two, three blocks. That one inch side may only measure 999 thousandths and six tenths. So you don't want to end up screwing up your part because you relied on something that you thought you knew the dimension of. The inside mic is uh, also pretty common. And these are a little different as well because this is very, very stiff and it's supposed to be. So when you check one of these out and you see that it's very difficult to turn, uh, don't think that it's defective. It's difficult to move because you don't want the measurement to change when you're inside the bore. You'd be putting this whole micrometer head into a bore and measuring between these two surfaces right here. You've got a short handle here and you can actually unscrew this and replace it with the longer handle. That way it's a little bit easier to hold inside the bore. And with the longer handle, kind of like telescoping gauges, you can rock it back and forth in the bore to make sure that you've got a good contact. And you would basically just be moving this a little bit at a time until you got the contact that you wanted there. Now this also has uh, interchangeable anvils. And you've got a locking screw there that allows you to take out this anvil right here. Now this is my two to three inch anvil. Obviously the micrometer head itself has some length. Uh, so the smallest anvil is two to three inches on this. It only has a half inch range on the micrometer head. So right now I can only measure two to two and a half inches. So if you want to measure from two and a half to three, you have to put in this little half inch sleeve that comes with it. And yes, that does occasionally get lost. And then you would tighten that back up and now you can measure from two and a half to three inches. 
besides that, it's read the exact same way as a regular micrometer, either inch or metric. It does take a pretty significant sense of feel in order to measure accurately with these um, because you can crank this, especially if your part is a little bit flexible, and you can sort of wish measurements into existence that aren't quite correct. Now these also have interchangeable anvils, so this is my 3 to 4 inch anvil, and that works the exact same way. You would slide that in instead of the 2 to 3 and lock it in position, and then if you need that uh, 3.5 to 4 range, you would put in the half inch sleeve. Now I've got anvils all the way up to 12 inches on this one, and uh, as you can see, my box has a pretty bad case of the disintegrating foam syndrome, so I'm not going to take those out because they're just covered in this, uh, this foam that's crumbling. I'm not really sure what causes the foam to disintegrate like that. I mean, it's probably the oils that are present in a machine shop. Uh, it could just be the type of foam that it just disintegrates after time. Who knows, it might even be humidity. So moving on, this is one that's not necessarily very common, but you see them in flea markets a lot, and uh, they are really handy if you do work with pipe and tubing. Uh, this is to measure the wall thickness of a piece of tubing. So if you have this little guy right there, you can crank down on it. This does not have a ratcheting thimble, so I use the same trick that I use with the depth micrometer and grip the smooth part of the thimble and just let it slip in my fingers and that tells me that my wall thickness is 16 thousandths of an inch. That's not something that everyone has to do on a regular basis, but when you do, there's, there's really no better way to do it. Uh, I've seen these with different size round anvils here that would fit inside the tube, and uh, this one is pretty nice for smaller tubes, less than 3 16 of an inch in the bore. Obviously though, if you're doing uh, larger tubing, uh, and you can get away with using a larger anvil, that's going to be stiffer and less likely to flex away under the pressure of the thimble. Now this is a thread micrometer, and it's probably going to be pretty hard to see on camera since this is so fine. Uh, this one measures from 32 to 40 threads per inch. So you have a V anvil right here that would fit over the crest of a thread on one side, and then a pointed anvil on this side that would fit into the root. This measures pitch diameter directly, and I've shown these in some of the videos where I've threaded. Uh, this one is actually a single range. Uh, these anvils are not interchangeable like the ones that I've shown in other videos. Since this only does a single range, you can actually pick these up pretty cheaply. I picked this one up on eBay maybe about 10 years ago, and I think I only paid about $20 for it. So that's really not too bad at all, especially considering how much the ones with interchangeable anvils cost. Now this one here is an oddball in a lot of different ways. Um, first of all, uh, it's metric, but it has a 50 millimeter range instead of just a 25 millimeter range. Uh, the other oddball thing is unlike most metric mics, you don't have half millimeter marks. So each revolution of the thimble is an entire millimeter and you have a hundred divisions that are very, very tiny on the thimble. Now, I think this one is actually homemade. Uh, it's very well made, so I'm thinking a toolmaker made it at some point. Uh, but there's no maker's mark anywhere, and the numbers all seem to be hand stamped. There's a, a bit of variation in their placement. It's a really slick mic. It even has a ratcheting thimble back here that uh, works quite well. Now the thing that really makes it different though are the anvils. They're both pointed and this style is what's called a comparator micrometer. So you can actually use this for measuring threads, uh, but it will not measure pitch diameter directly. What you'll do is have one point in the root of the threads on one side, the other point in the root of the threads on the other. So your micrometer will be slightly angled compared to your part and you would have to measure a good known thread before you tried to measure uh, the one that you're cutting. So that's where the name comes from. The comparator micrometer compares the good known thread that you have to the one that you're cutting. Now I know I got this one at a flea market and I think I paid the princely sum of ten dollars for it, so I think I got a pretty good deal even though I don't use it very often. 
There is a bewildering assortment of micrometers available out there for various jobs. Some of the more notable ones would be disc micrometers, for instance, which have a uh, wide flat disc as the anvils, uh, maybe about half an inch or 12 millimeters in diameter. And those are used for measuring something like uh, from the top of a surface down to a cutout on the edge, otherwise inaccessible. Uh, or for really large pieces, uh, you could measure O-ring grooves that way. Speaking of grooves, they actually have a groove micrometer, which actually looks uh, basically just like a micrometer head. It's straight, but it's got two very tiny discs on the end. Those tiny discs would be used to measure the width of a groove, uh, either internal or external. They also have V-anvil micrometers that would uh, basically have a V-shaped anvil like this. And those are used for measuring three flute end mills, which is otherwise difficult to do. Uh, of course, you can measure the shank, but the end mill itself, the cutting surfaces of the end mill, aren't necessarily the same diameter as the shank, especially if it's been reground. Now those specialty micrometers are very handy, but they do tend to be a lot more expensive than your standard outside micrometer because of volume. They make a lot more of these than they do of the specialty mics. And you can actually even see that with your outside micrometers. They make a lot more 0 to 1 inch mics and 0 to 25 millimeter mics than they do the larger sizes. So while those micrometers are very handy in the situations that they're made for, if you do need one, expect a little bit of sticker shock. If you really want to learn about micrometers, I suggest taking an industrial supplier's catalog and looking through the measuring tools section. You'll see a bunch of different micrometers in there that you may not necessarily have a use for, but it's good to know that they exist in case you do in the future. That's actually a good tip for learning about all of the tools of the trades, not just micrometers. Looking through catalogs is a great way to see what tools are out there, and the more knowledge you have about the tools that are available to you, the more likely you are to be able to solve any future problems. I hope this video helped. If it did, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching.